Hello and welcome to our Code for Kids course on my first game, Learning JavaScript, lesson number one. My name is Annabelle and I'm going to take you through the entire course from beginning to end so that you feel completely comfortable teaching the content. I'm going to give you little tips and tricks and give you your first introduction to learning how to teach JavaScript. Now this is the first time that you and the learners are going to be looking at and learning JavaScript and we do this in a way by introducing Tess the dog. And so what we can do with Tess and what she does is she drops balls so she can move, turn left and put the ball. These are the only three commands that she knows. These parentheses and capital letters become really important. So we're going to use Tess to do a whole lot of different commands and run through these tasks making awesome little pictures with her functions. We call this camel case because um, we always have a capital letter in the middle. So camel case, capital, um, you always have a capital letter kind of like um, the bump of a camel. So that's a nice little tip. You always say camel case having a little bump there. All right, let's move on to the languages. So Tess understands JavaScript. And what we've learned previously in my first website is HTML, the builder, and CSS, the artist. HTML keeping everything together in that website and CSS adding some colors. Now we're going to learn JavaScript. JavaScript is a really important coding language because it does both front-end and back-end coding. So we think it's awesome to teach. Um, but what JavaScript is, and in our characters, she is the engineer. And she says that I use functions to make things move and change on their own. And that's exactly what we're going to do with Tess. We're going to instruct her to use functions to move on her own. All right, let's start with task number zero. And um, what, we, what we've done here is we've always given you a task zero. This is so that you can go through this one with the learners and then you can let them do the rest on their own. Remember our important code for kids steps that the learners need to use their mouth and not their mouse when helping one another and that they must help each other. You can't give them all the answers. Okay, let's have a look at this page. So what we've got here uh, in these three rows is what brings up Tess on the right hand side. And so that there is telling us where the dog is sitting in the X coordinate and in the Y coordinate. And then we've got it enclosed between these two script tags. And these script tags are used to find what is called client side script. So in between here, client, your client side script is going to be the JavaScript. So that's all the way there. And then we've got these really important what's called a function instruction. Now, everything in between the function instruction um, in between these two curly brackets is what Tess is going to do. So maybe think of the function instruction as the story and that is the start of your story and everything else and everything happens in between those two brackets. And what we're going to do here is follow the task, press play and see what happens, then make Tess drop balls all along the top row. All right, so what's happening here with Tess is she's moving, she's putting the ball, she's moving, she's putting the ball, she's moving. So she moves, put ball, move, put ball, move. What are we missing to make Tess the dog drop balls all along the top row? So what we're missing here is she moves too quickly is we're missing this put ball. And like I said, the capitals and the parentheses being really important. She's putting the ball down three times, we needed to put it down five times, so we need two more of those like to keep it in line for neatness sake and we don't need that last move because then she's going to go into the wall and so here we go follow along the side put ball move put ball move put ball move put ball awesome and that is how the tasks go now we move on to task one and two this is where you can let the learners do it on their own we've told them they can start their code below here this is just a comment start your code below here Task one, press play and see what happens and then make Tess drop balls so it looks like task one in the answer tab. So this is the first introduction to this answer tab which we use and refer to a lot. The answer tab is over here and it's going to give you exactly what you need. So we want Tess to drop balls in a little four square and this is the first time we're going to introduce the other command which is turn left. So we've got a move, put ball, move, turn left move. All right, awesome. So what we know now is that again Tess needs to turn left. Okay. 
Now we have all four balls. Then we need to see how Tess finishes up. And she finishes up facing north. So at the moment we've got her facing west. And so we need to turn right. You can always get the kids to actually stand up and do this. I think it's a great thing to do. So get them to stand up, face west, and then realize that if they want to uh, face north, they need to turn right. Now, Tess doesn't know how to turn right, so in order to do that, we need to turn left three times. Now, this is really frustrating for a lot of them um, because obviously it's using lines of code, it's wasting time. But what we really want them to do is get frustrated, go down this long path of being able to go down this path of not being able to turn right and then think about a solution that we're going to lead into for next lesson, which is creating your own function called turn right. So turn right is always going to be turn left three times, but how can we minimize this code? How can we stop from writing turn left all the time? And hopefully some of them will ask that question, some of them may not, but that's okay. At least you got them frustrated and hopefully looking for a solution. All right, then I just need a little move there. Awesome. And let's check the answer tab. Yes, that looks great. Task one. Task two, very similar. Um, task three, making a T. And then task four goes from 4.1 to 4.2 to 4.3. And in task four, all of these build up on each other. So what we've done is we've got a tower there. And then Tess has to fill in that right angle triangle with balls and then make the rest of the tower, um, sorry, make the rest of the pyramid as a, as symmetrical. So we've got half the tower in 4.2 and then 4.3 as a lead on. So that is what they would have to do in task number four. To get to task number four, it will take them uh, quite a lot of code and a lot of time. So if you want to split this lesson over two lessons, that is completely up to you. You can do that if you, if you wish. But that is the end of Test the Dog, the first introduction uh, to JavaScript. We hope you have a fantastic lesson and that your learners really enjoy it.